Hello and uh, welcome. Uh, we are going to look at tests now that involve two samples from the normal distribution. What do we mean by two samples? Uh, there are two different sets of samples in two different situations or maybe say you know there are two machines producing some things and you want to compare the weights of those two uh, or weights of the things that are produced by these two machines. So you make measurements with this machine, measurements with this machine. So you get one set of normal samples, another set of normal samples and you have to say whether they are similar or not those kind of questions, right? So you, this shows up all the time. So supposing you want to compute the average IQ level of one group versus the average IQ level of another group, okay? You go to this one group, you make measurements on these groups, you may go to this other group, make measurements on these groups and finally some numbers come out and you have to say whether they are similar or not. Are they, is the mean similar, is the average IQ similar or is the variation of IQ among the population similar? Many other interesting questions like this you can ask. So these kind of tests are done routinely by the way. Huh? So for instance, there are organizations which will measure, uh, you know, high school students coming out, the level of what they know versus what they don't know. Is it the same? Do they have the minimum level? All these kind of questions. So these are complex questions for which, you know, people may derive some methods, but ultimately there has to be some statistics on how many samples you take, where you pick the samples and finally from the results, you have to meaningfully conclude in a statistical significant way, is it really different or is it really the same, okay? So on all these things, you'll have two samples. So having multiple samples is always a realistic uh, scenario, okay? So let's see how to do tests for means and variances when there are two samples, okay? So we have N1 samples from the first distribution, let's say normal with mean mu1 variance sigma1 square and N2 samples from uh, normal with mean mu2 and variance sigma2 square. So normally you expect N1 and N2 to be similar, but it may happen that N1 and N2 are not similar also. And there are good reasons why that may happen. But this is, uh, in, in most cases, maybe N1 and N2 are close by, okay? Okay, so what are the various distributions now when you have two samples? The sample mean of X will have normal with mean mu1 and variance sigma1 squared by N1. The sample mean of Y will also have normal distribution with mean mu2 and variance sigma2 squared by n2, that's okay. There are similar results for sample variance of x and sample variance of y, okay. So these two, these two are not surprising at all. We already saw it separately for each of the samples, same thing I'm repeating. Now there are interconnections between these two samples and they also have interesting distributions, okay. So now I will assume first of all that these two are also independent of each other. Okay, so this is a crucial assumption. Okay, so we have always assumed the samples need to be independent. Not only that, the two different samples have to be independent of each other. That also is an important assumption. Once you make that assumption, it turns out these two interrelationship in the distributions are true. What are the two interrelated uh, distributions? The first is x bar minus y bar. Okay, the difference between the two sample means is once again normal. This is not very hard to show. Why is that? This is actually, uh, if you think about it, it's a linear combination of independent normals. Isn't it? We've studied this before. Linear combination of independent normals is again a normal distribution. And once you say it's normal, I only need to find the expected value and the variance. Now expected value of a linear combination of independent normals, again we know what to do. The mean is just mu1 minus mu2 and the variances will add, right? Even though there's a minus here, don't subtract the variances. The variances will add, right? Because why? Because variance gets multiplied by square of the factor, right? Remember, so minus 1 squared, so you will end up getting sigma1 squared by n1 plus sigma2 squared by n2, okay? So this is the distribution for x bar minus mu bar, okay? This is quite an easy thing to derive in some sense, but it's also good to uh, remember this, right? So x bar minus y bar has this uh, distribution. It's not very hard to derive. Once you know it's linear combination of independent normals, this is easy to derive, right? So why is that? So let me maybe write it down. Expected value of x bar minus y bar is expected value of x bar minus expected value of y bar. Okay, this is easy enough to see linearity of expectation. What is variance of x bar minus y bar? These two are independent. So it's variance of x bar plus minus one whole squared, right? So it's, it's like a times x bar plus b times y bar. The variance is a squared times variance of x bar plus b squared. So you have to square it times the variance of y bar, okay? And variance of x bar, you know, is sigma one squared by n. Variance of y bar is sigma two squared by n and minus one squared, it just becomes plus one, okay? 
So it's easy to remember these things. If you know where they come from, it's very quick to derive. And when you know how to derive, you also tend to remember more. Okay. All right. So that's the x bar minus y bar. This is a normal normal distribution. We know how to deal with normal distributions. No problem. So now let's go to the sample variances. It turns out the ratio of these two sample variances when sigma 1 equals sigma 2. This is an important criteria here. I didn't write it down very cleanly enough. If sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2, then Sx squared by Sy squared takes this f distribution. This is called the f distribution. Okay. This is important. And what is this f distribution? For different values of n1, n2, I have shown the PDF here. Okay. If n1 and n2 are 1, it looks like sort of exponential fall. If n1 and n2 is equal to 5, it sort of rises and then has an exponential fall. It is sort of like, you know, some x power something, e power minus something, like, like that figure for n1 different and n2 different. Okay. And uh, like I said, the ratio is f uh, n1 minus 1, n2 minus 1. Uh, in case you are interested in the sort of more general result, uh, it, it sort of looks like this. If chi squared n1 divided by n1 divided by chi squared n2 divided by n2, right? This actually is f n1, n2. So this is where the f distribution comes from in case you are interested as to how I got this. So, it's, if you take a chi-square distributed n, uh, random variable n1 degrees of freedom divided by n1 and divide by chi-square degrees of freedom n2 divided by n2, that ratio when they are two independent things is actually f n1 n2. It has this distribution and this f is a known distribution. Okay? So, you can assume that this f distribution for any n1 n2, you know the CDF, you know the PPF, you know the inverse of the CDF, everything is known to you. Okay? So, that is uh, important to remember. So, once given this result, if you notice here actually from this, this implies, okay, so you look at this uh, equations carefully, uh, this implies, uh, you know, Sx squared by sigma 1 squared divided by Sy squared by sigma 2 squared is actually Fn1 n2, n1, okay, so n1 minus 1, I am running out of room here, it is Fn1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1 this is the result, right? So, you will get Sx squared by sigma 1 squared by Sy squared by sigma 2 squared is f n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1. This is a general result, okay? Now, if sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2, you see that they cancel and Sx squared by Sy squared itself becomes this f distribution. So, this is what is going on with uh, distribution of two samples. Once again, remember x bar minus y bar is normal, difference of mean and the variances add for the sample means the ratio of the two sample variances when sigma 1 and sigma 2 are equal is directly the f distribution. If sigma 1 and sigma 2 are not equal, the ratio will come there, you know, that sigma 1 squared by sigma 2 squared will be the f distribution, okay. So, maybe this result is uh, important enough to note down, okay.